like our face, but it hit way bigger. Just keep slapping the waves way bigger. Pull your back, but it hit way bigger. How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to show you how Essential Effects works and how to use it. First I'm going to set up my whole timeline and get my clips ready. Now that we have all our clips organized on the timeline, we can start getting into Essential Effects. So the first thing I want to show you is the color grading. Since all my footage is recorded in S-Log, I do need to D-Log these clips first. Now that I have my D-Log file on here, I made some slight adjustments with the highlights and the whites. Now I want to make a color grade that makes the car stand out. When you hover over the thumbnail, you'll see a preview at the top, which shows what you're about to apply. So I'm just going to double click and it'll apply it to the top layer. Make any adjustments you need to do on the bottom layer since every clip is different. And now let's move on. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the velocity and speed ramps. We have reverse velocity, sharp velocity, and short velocities. I'm going to skip these first two clips because I want to do something special for those. So I'm going to start with the bass drop. For this one, since it hits pretty hard, I'm going to put a sharp velocity on. What I'm going to do now is click on the layer I want to apply to and then double click the one I want. Now I'm going to press U to open up the keyframes, and I'm going to move the last set of keyframes to the end of the clip. Now I'm going to do that for the rest of my clips and dial it in. Since this one's a shorter clip, I'm going to go to short velocity. As you can see, this one's meant for a shorter clip. For this clip right here, I wanted to do two speed ramp motions, one at the beginning and one towards the end of the clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to sharp velocity, and I'm going to go to a double velo. Double click that to apply. Now you can see I have multiple sets of keyframes. So first, we'll drag this last set right here. I want my speed keyframe to be over here. And I'll move one of the short keyframes over here. Now I'm gonna put a reverse onto the next clip. Select the last set of keyframes and move that to the end. For this clip, I like how the velocity is, but I do want it a little bit slower. So I'll go over here to the speed keyframe and I'll just lower this. Now that the speed ramping is done and dialed in, I'm gonna add some shake effects. So I'm gonna choose what layer I wanna add it to. I'm going to go to the beginning of that layer, I'm going to choose a shake. If you want to adjust anything, just press U and you can adjust it here. If you want to make your own shake, go to adjustable shake. Now you can adjust all the effects with the asterisks on it. So we'll do frequency 3 and increase the amplitude. We'll have it stop right here. Now let's add some more effect shakes. Now if I want to add a shake into the middle of the clip, for this double speed ramp clip right here, I'm gonna move my cursor to where I want the shake to start, click on the layer, I'll choose my shake, and I'll trim it right there. And as you can see, it'll apply it right there to where I set my cursor at. The shake's a little bit more than what I want, so I'm gonna go over here and I'll adjust the amplitude. Now that we've got the shakes done, I'm gonna add some effects in here, and the goal is to try to use only essential effects for this whole video. I want this effect to end right around here, so I'll just change the opacity, put it to zero. I want some type of distortion effect here, so I'm gonna go to the adjustable effects. I'm gonna use the decay effect. For the first clip right here, I'm gonna add an intro effect as well. I'm gonna use the limo wipe too. Now that we've created a whole video just with essential effects, we'll make a new composition called its final effects. I'll grab that composition, put it into here, trim this up. We're going to go to adjustable effects and we're going to add in motion blur. As you can see, motion blur is active. Now we can render.